Do you have tips for businesses, Michael, on TikTok? Uh, yeah. Um, tips for businesses. I'm trying to think of like what's like the most distilled basic thing that people i guess i'll say this thing i I haven't really talked about it publicly very much it's something Mm -hmm. i want to create like a little free mini lesson on or training but all this other stuff is great if you could do a trend amazing if you could have an alpha all this other stuff it's it's cool it's great but i think a lot of people lose sight especially business owners on the little things they can improve on ahead of time Mm -hmm. without even being like the technical stuff so i guess like a basic example of this like if you're going to go on a date with someone you, if you have a really good personality and you're funny and you're bubbly and you're positive, you're good to go. Like you can come looking schlumpy. You can have your hair. It doesn't matter. Most people, you know, they just enjoy you for you. But on the opposite, if you have a really shit personality and you're rude, but you have a nice watch and nice clone, it doesn't really matter because the core fundamental pillar of who you are, it's not really that well. So I use that as this example where if you can get really good at copywriting, if you can get really good at storytelling, and if you can get really good at like um, nonverbal cues, things that people can pick up on, your videos will just tend to naturally do good. And if you could add all that other stuff on, if I show up with a nice watch, I smell nice, I got a haircut, it just adds to a more likelihood like, oh, he's handsome, oh, he's charming. But you know what I mean? If you don't have that core thing. So I would say maybe one thing to think about is looking at these TikTok videos and also planning. And, you know, for, especially for businesses, it's going to come down to more educational. Yeah, you could do the trends, be fun. You could do all that stuff. It's great. But if you're going to do more of the direct content, I would say one, look at your body language. Like really for anybody who's watching the video right now, if I'm like this and I'm like, I'm so excited to tell you about something. Um, this literally changed my life. It doesn't sync up. And I notice a lot of business owners, they're frozen. They're so rigid. But if I was like, I'll kind of move my mic so I don't punch it. If I'm like, oh my God, guys, I'm so excited. Like all of a sudden, you know, we've evolved and we've grown up to see visual cues. I think there was a study where they showed a mom staring at her baby, stone face, doesn't make any facial expressions. That baby freaks out and starts crying and it starts like, Cause we're just evolved to look at the yeah. face to see the body. And the moment the mom smiles, the baby laughs and it goes back to normal. So you know, as a young age, we're trained to see this body language of visual cues. So I think it's a very easy, simple, low hanging fruit. Don't need to figure out any crazy TikTok stuff. If you can one, figure out your body language, make sure it syncs up, use your hands. If you're going to use something like, here's something, if, watch the video. If you guys can watch the video, I'm pointing with my fingers. Here's one thing you got to do right now to just explode. Like these hand gestures, these big grandiose ones, it just pulls you in. Maybe also the second thing I would say is tonality where I'm like, if I said, oh my God, guys, this is the most impressive thing. It's like, dude, you sound so bored. But if I'm like, (laughs) guys, you might want to turn the volume down. I'm going to talk a little louder on the mic. Like, oh my God, guys, this is crazy. Like that just makes you feel excited. You feel more eager or eager or on the opposite. If I'm like, okay, guys, I got a secret for you but don't tell anybody like that lower tone pulls you in, in the natural way that you would normally do that. So I would say body language, tonality. And then I will also say storytelling and more of that, like psychology behind it. What's the examples you're using? What are the things you're saying? Like these things are really important. So if I'm like, let's say you're a business and you're targeting a young demographic teens, I'm not going to say, you know, here's a really cool thing about Tina Turner. It's like, Tina Turner. I think that's my mom's music she used to listen to. You should probably do something that's more applicable to that audience. So it's like, here's something really good to know about um, Lil Baby. I don't know. I'm just, that's the first one that popped in my head. That's like a young person's rapper music, you know? So if you are going to think of things psychologically to say, make sure it's something that's relatable to that targeted demographic. What do they look like? What are they buying? Who are they watching? What are they consuming? It's a very easy way to relate. If you can combine these three elements, I know this sounds so basic and it sounds so simplified, but really, again, look at TikTok, look at your favorite TikTok people and pay attention to their body language, pay attention to their tones and pay attention to the psychology of what they're saying. If you could do that, all of their stuff, it's fluff. It's all, it's all icing on the cake. It does help. It does increase. You do want to pay attention to that, but it doesn't matter if I'm doing all the cool trips and hacks and hashtag strategy. I'm just like, oh my God, guys, this is the most exciting news I've ever heard. No, no one's, no one's <laughs> inspired. No one's excited. So I think that would be some of the most basic stuff I would say um, yeah. from a fundamental thing. Maybe just like as a quick little 30 second, you know, crash course, I would say one, go on TikTok, 
go search up whatever the field is. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing you can do, and I would suggest doing is when you search it up on the TikTok app, on the very top right corner, you get these little three line rulers where you can adjust the settings, click that, it'll drop down, and then you can choose based off time frames now. So you can be like, I wanna see content with this keyword that has it in it for the last seven days, the last 30 days, last 90 days. And I would say just consume that content. Look at what they're doing. I'm not saying rip them off and copy them, but look at mm -hmm. what's working for Joy, where it's like, oh, we're the same niche. She's talking about mom stuff. Okay, I'm a mom. Maybe I can get some ideas from there. Simple thing you could do, just yeah. do that. I would say go into other people, your competitors, um, comments mm -hmm. and read their comments, see what people are talking about. Cause a lot of times people will do something about, let's say, for example, I make a video about, um, uh, substance abuse, let's just say yeah. about, you know, something that's really emotional. You might think it's like, Oh, they want to hear about substance abuse. But if you look at the comments, it's like, Oh, I have a family member that's dealing with that. I don't know what to do for them. It wasn't the, that the actual real true essence was that personal thing. And you can see people have 500 replies to that answer or whatever. That could be a cue to you to be like how to deal with substance abuse. If your family member is a part of it, that's just going to work a little bit better. So you can start to get these better ideas and really understand more of the psychographic information of what's really, really happening there. Um, and I think the last thing I would say is don't, don't overboard yourself. Don't try to do the most. Don't try to do 20 videos a day. Like take it with ease. I feel like a lot of people feel this pressure and they pump out content. They're doing all this stuff. They get burnt out. Something happens. They love it. Something doesn't happen. They hate it. Such an emotional roller coaster. I would say if you're going to do a video for that day, set a time boundary, have healthy constraints. I'm going to spend 30 minutes doing a video today. That's it. That's it. And be okay. If you didn't finish it, save it as a draft. I'll come back to it later. I think too much, too often. Most mm -hmm. of the business owners that quit, they're just like, I'm overwhelmed. And I'm like, I get it. But like, yeah. you just gotta, you gotta get some consistency there and something that's like reliable. So yeah, hopefully that answers the question to that's some good. extent.